This week, we have Don of the HBAR Foundation back to talk about eToro and exchange listings in general. Another council member launching a Hedera use case, smart contracts, 2.0 highlights, market commentary, and more. Let's get it. There was an article in The Motley Fool by Dave Kovaleski entitled, Can Hedera Reach $1? He writes a glowing review of Hedera and the HBAR, concluding by saying, Will it hit $1 by the end of 2022? Given the uncertainty in the market right now and the potential for regulations, it's hard to say when that plateau will be reached. But it is definitely one to keep an eye on because it has some key advantages that will serve it well in the long term as the market evolves. Thanks to Coinman for highlighting this story. And don't forget to follow him on Twitter. Hedera highlighted Verity by Center, the company behind USDC. Verity is a decentralized model for identity credential issuance and verification. According to Christian Hasker, Verity is a consortium that's going to drive standards and decentralized identity for use in financial services so that there is a common framework for identity across different chains and ecosystem participants. Hedera is one of the founding participants in Verity and will help mold and drive those standards. From what I've seen, it seems like Hedera likes to be involved with setting standards across the industry. Leveraging ETH Denver, Hedera ran a marketing campaign in the Denver airport. This ad was there to greet travelers. If you manage to get a picture, make sure to tweet and tag us at the HBAR Bowl. We're hoping to get Hedera CMO Christian Hasker on in the spring to do a full rundown of their 2022 marketing strategy. Finally, Verizon did a story on the metaverse where Hedera council member Boeing was mentioned and Hedera got a nice shout out. They said recently, the HBAR Foundation and Metaverse, a web-based 3D creation platform, announced a partnership to build an enterprise metaverse where the world's largest organizations on the Hedera platform can perform simulated training, sales, marketing, and entertainment functions. In light of a major HBAR listing this week, we have Don from the HBAR Foundation to give us some deeper insights. Let's get right into it. Don, can you tell us about this week's listing and the foundation's overall exchange strategy? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so today or yesterday, I should say, we announced uh, the listing of HBAR in the eToro application so that users can now go into their eToro account and be able to purchase and trade uh, HBAR, which is really exciting. I mean, it's one thing uh, you know to have just a, another announcement uh, for an exchange listing, but it's another to have that same company you know have a major Super Bowl commercial here in the U.S., you know, followed by their HBAR listing that week. So, you know, we're really excited uh, to, to see that come to light. It ties into our broader strategy of really wanting to accelerate the number of on-ramps where people can be getting access to uh, HBAR from these consumer-focused applications. Uh, and eToro is certainly one of the biggest. Um, now, obviously, there's still some items they're working on implementing, like wallet support for withdrawing uh, HBAR from eToro and U.S. support as well. Um, but certainly, this represents, I think, a good first step uh, for working with the eToro community and one we're very, very excited about. Absolutely. So the HBAR Foundation put out a teaser tweet the day before the eToro mm -hmm. listing. What's the rationale behind announcing announcements? Yeah, you know, the, the short answer is it, it depends if that's what we'll do kind of every time, right? Mm -hmm. We want to always engage the community, uh, bring excitement to the community, and also, whenever possible, let them know what we're doing. And so sometimes we see those teasers as a good way to drive that engagement, but it might not happen every time. So, you know, we also don't want to be just uh, driving too much speculation, but sometimes it can be a good way for driving community engagement and discussion. Sure. I guess the, the flip side is there could be, you know, a buy the rumor, sell the fact dynamic that could kind of set up. But um, one of the things that mm. I would love to see is you have a, a market moving announcement like eToro, and then a few mm. days later have something, uh, another market moving uh, announcement. Keep the market on its toes. Mm. Don't let traders <laughs> get too comfortable trading around these announcements. But I digress. Uh, many are curious when we'll see other top exchanges like Coinbase, Kraken, and Gemini. Was the mm. Uh, was not being open source a barrier in your opinion? And are the floodgates for more exchange listings now open? Yeah, it's a great question. I think we always saw open source as something that should come to all of the Hedera stack. You know, for years, it's been almost 90% of the code that makes up Hedera has been open sourced. But it was great to see, you know, this last piece of the Hashgraph consensus algorithm get over the line uh, just recently. 
And I think that certainly has prevented some organizations or developers from building on Hedera. And we're excited to see already the momentum building behind the open source community that this further accelerates. So look, I don't know that that's something that would guarantee the listing by some of those organizations you mentioned, but we certainly at the ACPR Foundation see it as a way to engage more developers, grow the actual number of contributors to Hedera, and really you know, continue to drive awareness and adoption of this exciting technology. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, we have an interview lined up with Tom Sosnoff to discuss Tastyworks listing HBAR. Mm. And there's mm-hmm. plenty of speculation out there around PayPal. What are your thoughts on non-traditional crypto on-ramps offering HBAR? And by non-traditional, I mean um, platforms that weren't born as crypto exchanges. Yeah. Um, I mean, firstly, I'm, I'm definitely excited to hear about that interview. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Um, but look, I think what's most interesting about the space is that pretty much everything now is non-traditional exchanges. Um, so at first there were crypto only exchanges that were the only means for people to integrate with the token. And now we're seeing application after application start to incorporate it. That's, you know, fintech apps like Robinhood um, and others that want to enable people to buy and invest in tokens. But I think we'll also start to see um, things like, uh, you know, consumer brands and loyalty points applications that, you know, might be something that somebody normally gets like a credit card point through now has the same integration with a cryptocurrency or with a token. So for me, I think that's an, a really exciting area of growth because that number of on-ramps is just only going to explode as tokens become more integrated into these different fintech, consumer brand, uh, and non-crypto native applications. And, and certainly that's where we're excited to see and continue drive a lot of growth. Thanks, Don. So again, thanks for making the time. Any final thoughts? No, I, I think as always, um, you know, we're, we're here to help support the community. So if there's any projects that you're working on, your audience is working on, or things you'd like to see us look into, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself, the team uh, on Twitter, uh, or through our website where people can submit grant requests. And um, as always, we'll do our best to get back as soon as we can and help, help keep uh, helping to grow this ecosystem. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Don. Hedera Governing Council member LG Electronics is getting into the NFT business, and I guess if I'm covering it, it's not a surprise that they're issuing these NFTs on Hedera. LG is working with various artists to create a series of graphic NFTs. Their OLED high-resolution screens are being used to showcase the tokenized artwork. LG is going to leverage their relationships with countless artists to continue their entry into the NFT space. If you aren't familiar, LG OLED TVs have self lit pixels that turn on and off to achieve perfect black and infinite contrast. So now we have yet another Hedera Council member that's getting serious about using the network and highlighting their products in doing so. A special thanks to Jessica, Crypto Observer, and all the other community members that put the proper emphasis on this story that only ran in Korean news outlets. One of the things that impresses me so much about Smart Contracts 2.0 is the order of magnitude improvement in the amount of transactions it can handle is just for smart contract transactions. Hedera can still handle 10,000 HCS, HTS, and token transfers per second. What this means is normal crypto, HTS, and HCS transactions don't put any pressure on the smart contract limitations Hedera's VP of Engineering is about to outline, whereas everyone sending ETH between wallets and exchanges puts further limits on what Ethereum can process through their smart contracts. Hedera did a great live stream on the launch of Smart Contracts 2.0, and here are the highlights. Smart Contracts 2, live on the Hedera mainnet. Smart contracts on Hedera are written in Solidity and offer predictable and inexpensive gas fees, fast and highly scalable transactions, and a carbon-negative footprint. Build the next generation of decentralized applications. This was a major release for us. We've performed a lot of uh, really heavy engineering work in order to replace our existing smart contracts implementation with a brand new one that has high performance, full compatibility, and deep integrations into the Hedera network. So first, compatibility. Um, Compatibility was one of the things that we knew we needed to address in our smart contracts platform. There's an entire ecosystem built around the Ethereum uh, smart contract system, and we wanted to be able to tap into that and to provide some additional value over and above what Ethereum mainnet gives you today, specifically around 
pricing and performance um, with all the things that we are known for here at Hedera. So we wanted to take and or create a compatible EVM that was running inside our Hedera mainnet nodes. And we looked at all different types of options and we found the Hyperledger Basu project, which is a compatible uh, Ethereum client written in Java. And we looked at the code. We were really impressed with the quality of the code and the, the, the capabilities that it had. So we decided to use that as the basis for our new EVM uh, in Hedera for Smart Contracts 2.0. In fact, we do use exactly the same code, not just the basis of it. It is the same EVM. For us, we're able to run this EVM in our system, and it's a completely compatible EVM with Ethereum mainnet. This means that for the smart contracts that you have, we support the same set of byte codes. We support the uh, same kind of capabilities. Um, and we're building out more of the tooling and ecosystem around that to enable you to be able to, to use standard tools to be able to um, also deploy and develop with our EVM implementation. So the second component of that that I talked about was speed. Um, Hedera is known for its speed. At launch, with our Smart Contracts 2.0, we do as much EVM computation in one second as the Ethereum mainnet will do in 13 seconds. And we do it with low predictable fees. And we continue to work on speed um, improvements for future releases. Third, um, I mentioned integration. For us, the real power of the smart contracts is not just in the ability to write and deploy those smart contracts, even at high speeds and low predictable fees, but it's really the coupling of that with all of the APIs and capabilities that we have at the layer one level of our network. For example, in this release, we support the ability from within your smart contract to mint, burn, transfer, associate, and disassociate tokens that were defined in the Hedera token service, both fungible and non-fungible tokens. So you can create those, those tokens inside the HTS using our Hedera API. And then from within the smart contract, you can actually go and perform any of those operations, for example, uh, token transfers between two parties. Uh, with this smart contract 2.0 will revolutionize the Web3 world, including the metaverse and other blockchain use cases. So I'm very bullish on having this smart contract 2.0 offering by Hedera. So we at FIS from WorldPay, we are running a node on with Hedera and we are also participating in the Hashport network, which is the bridge between Ethereum, Polygon and the Hedera assets. One of the interesting use cases that we have seen from the DLA Piper, which is one of the world's largest law firms, they have built Toko, a tokenized assets platform, which focused on exchange of high value assets. The other use case that we have also seen from FPOS, which is the major payment processor in Australia, they have investigated using Hedera as the new payment trail to support online micropayments. One more, which I should uh, also mention here from Shinhan Bank, and they have con conducted their first proof of concept in effort to use the stable coins to reduce the cost and time to manage the cross border settlement using the Hedera token service and the consensus service altogether. So these are all the different payment specific use cases that has been built on top of the Hedera's overall offerings using consensus and the token service. So what could be the next with the smart contract 2.0? So DeFi or the decentralized finance is an interesting sector in crypto. And its growth is strong since 76% of open source developers in 2021. And even businesses are starting to look towards high yields on their project. Thus far, the distributed ledger this world's like enterprise and the crypto native applications like DeFi have been divided. So they were completely separate. What if we start to see these lines blur? And what if the enterprise use cases like supply chains, stable coins, bridges come together to see a new world? And this area is ripe for innovation. 
and one I believe Hedera is uniquely positioned for to help this navigate. The new Hedera smart contract service 2.0 can help us connect and start to work more seamlessly across the web two and the web three universes. This week was a roller coaster. We started around 23 cents, ramped up to over 26 cents on the eToro news and back to around 23 cents at the time of recording. I think we would have struggled after the announcement, but the broader markets performed well on Tuesday and Wednesday and we held the gains. Unfortunately, Thursday and Friday saw risk assets fall, and of course crypto and HBAR were included. We ended about flat on the week. Still, without the positive price action following the teaser before the eToro listing, we would have been down. HBAR is a leaf in a cyclone right now, and it really depends on what happens in the broader markets, but I'm looking for some local support at about $0.22 cents and resistance at about $0.26. I think we're going to continue to see support from the expanding Hedera ecosystem and increasing utilization if the rest of the market struggles, and it will act as an octane boost if risk assets rally. In a few weeks, we're going to start to ramp up content, and I have no doubt Hedera is going to give us plenty to work with. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and let us know what you're thinking down in the comments.